On day two, we started at Vanderland Dairy. The dairy was built in 2002 and is ran by second generation farmer Eric Vanderland and his wife Melanie. We visited the milking parlor where 3,500 cows get milked five times a day. The entire milking process only takes three to five minutes, but it's an eight hour day for both Eric and Melanie. After milking, it goes to the receiving room where it is filtered. The milk goes from 100 degrees to 60 to 75 degrees. The milk then goes to a big tank where 50,000 pounds of milk can be stored. And all of their milk is shipped to Highland. Eric and Melanie work alongside Eric's parents and their 55 employees on the dairy. One of the cow barns we visited held 600 cows that have all had their first calf and were going through their first lactation. They are fed a majority forage diet, which consists of 70% hay and corn. After the dairy, we went to Jan's Pumpkin Hill. Mary Beth greeted us and we all went for a tractor hay ride to see the pumpkin patch. Mary Beth wanted a daytime job so she didn't have to send her kids to daycare, so she started with a corn maze. She says they do it for the kids who have never done any of this, specifically city kids. They've also added a bounce house pillow, zip line, and a cookie shed. The OALP class enjoyed the bounce pillow. Every child that comes through the pumpkin patch goes home with a small pumpkin. The Yon family's goal is to educate the children to know where their food and clothes come from. Then we went to the Surreal Mine from AGC Materials. The mine processes and distributes minerals and aggregates, including gypsum and hydrate, limestone and sand all over the world. This was a short trip, but it was neat to see how the mine operated. We then went to the Apache Seed Farm in Apache, Oklahoma, where we met with the owner, Alan Mineman. 110 years ago, his great-grandpa bought the farm in 1921, and then Alan bought it from his parents and started farming in 1995. Alan is the only person in the Southern Plains to grow and evaluate 20 to 30 new crops every year. If the crop proves to be successful, he will use them for small-scale production. Alan has used the no-till practice since he started the farm in 1995. Alan told the group it's bad to be like everyone else and he likes to be different. He enjoys mixing the crops together and one of the crops he told us about was cow peas and okra. Over 90% of Alan's crop ends up being forage for livestock. He harvests his crops with one combine and five different heads, and he also makes all the decisions on his crops. The OALP group got to examine some of his crops that he grows on his farm. We left Apache and drove to Carnegie to visit the Horn Canna Farm, where Dustin Snow, owner and operator, met with us. The operation started with only half a dozen cannas in the 1920s. Harvest for cannas start in October, and they use a peanut digger as their harvest tool. After getting them out of the ground, they wash and sort the flowers, wash them again, trim them, and then grade them by size. They then count and put them in shipping boxes. The Snow family sells directly to customers and also to greenhouses and end up in places like Walmart and Tractor Supply. Each can of flour grows from a bulb and each one can produce up to three bulbs and the bulbs are about as big as your hand. The Snow family has about 200 acres, but only 50 were harvested this year. They grow every kind and color and produce around a million bulbs. They use a four row planter to plant the cannas and water them one inch a week. After the canna farm, we drove to Woodward and had dinner at the Stafford Air and Space Museum. We got to mingle with fellow OALP classmates, alumni, while eating Mexican food and learning about crop production in the area, along with the museum's history and how it ended up in South Oklahoma. Some of the crops we learned about from alumni were pumpkin, sweet potatoes, cotton, and peppers. We also got to enjoy a tour of the museum. Many of us didn't know about space travel or spaceships, so it was neat to see all of that in one place. We then departed with host families for the evening to rest up for the upcoming day.